You'll be ushered into a room, very privately at number 10, will be laid out in front of you what are called the letters of last resort. Your orders to our Trident boat captain on whether you, Prime Minister Liz Truss, is giving the order to unleash our nuclear weapons. It would mean global annihilation. I won't ask you, would you press the button? You will say yes. But faced with that task, I would feel physically sick. How does that thought make you feel? I think it's an important duty of the Prime Minister. I'm ready to do that. I asked how it would make you feel. I'm, I'm ready to do it. Pope Francis met with the participants of the European Youth Conference and encouraged them to transform the old continent into something new. He said they can affect this change by being more attentive and less swayed by ideologies than previous generations, and urged them to be sensitive to environmental issues. Pope Francis praised the concrete commitments young people have made to care for humanity's common home. He explained how urgent it is to reduce consumption not only of fossil fuels, but of many superfluous things, and said that in certain parts of the world, it would be advisable to consume less meat. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. The Pope also asked them to read his encyclical Laudato Si, where he thinks both believers and non-believers can find reasons to commit themselves to integral environmentalism. The Pope encouraged young people to be capable of generating new ideas, but above all, of seeking new paths to travel along together. For all of these reasons, I have decided that the global monkeypox outbreak represents a public health emergency of international concern. It's going to be the fourth industrial revolution, an all-consuming industrial revolution right across the board, the speed of change a thousand times faster than during the first industrial revolution and affecting uh, all services, all products, all countries, all industries and all people. It's going to lead to job destruction, so we've got to think about the jobs of the future and how we create them. It's going to lead to massive uh, technological change in the way we deliver uh, services. It's going to force governments to change their minds about how they operate. And all this has been set out by Klaus Schwab in the speech he made uh, in Abu Dhabi uh, to the uh, summit uh, of the Agenda Council. We think, we central banks, and uh, I'm not the only one here, uh, there are you know, at least 80 
uh, central banks around the world that are looking at digital currencies, uh, we think that it's uh, a duty of us to actually have available digital currencies uh, that would operate to the benefit of consumers. So what would it look like? Well, um, it could be used like banknotes. I don't think it is like banknotes because it will not have the degree of anonymity that banknotes have. And, and I, I find it very interesting, by the way, that in the consultation that we, could, we conducted, um, that consumers who responded in very large numbers said, uh, we want our privacy to be protected, but we, want, we don't want anonymity because they understand the risk of anonymity when it comes to digital uh, currency. Would you like to sample our vegan bacon? 100% meatless. Yes, please. Another, please. Sir, is there a problem? I'm just making sure no one ever has to eat this. I, I don't think I can give you any more. I want one. Hey. What we are living through is a time of great upheaval. Firstly, because we are witnessing, and not just since this summer, but over the past few years, the end of what we might have seen as abundance. And for those who enjoyed it, it is also the end of a carefree time. Our freedom, the liberty to which we have grown accustomed to in our lives has a price, and sometimes when we have to defend it, we have to make certain sacrifices as we fight to defend it. We're developing through technology, an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? That's where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon footprint tracker. Hmm. Stay tuned. We don't have it operational yet, but this is something that we're working on. Climate change has brought higher temperatures, extreme weather, and melting ice caps. Soon climate change could show up in your freezer. Popular ice cream flavors now in danger. The raw ingredients there are a little harder to grow in a hotter world. It's chocolate chip cookie dough day inside the factory where Ben & Jerry's makes its ice cream. Bite-sized chunks of frozen cookie dough get added, followed by chocolate chips. But climate change is threatening this popular ice cream pint and many others. All of these flavors in the cup are endangered. They are because they've all got cocoa, coffee, vanilla, nuts. All of these ingredients are actually now under... in this time of coronavirus. It's certainly a major crisis, but it also offers us a unique opportunity. Now is the time to make the changes we need to build a climate resilient world, to increase prosperity and improve public health, but also to build back better, fostering green and inclusive recovery, and to achieve progress towards the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. I can hope we can seize this momentum. What is coming is we will use more of that data, we will establish partnerships, and we, will, we, embark, we are embarking on a journey of diversification uh, of the lifestyle, I would say, not only diversification of energy. 
we need to change our behaviors. If we're serious about SDGs, we need to consume less. We need from food to energy to water. More, more population is coming. And if we just continue the way we are behaving as human beings, I don't think it's going to be sustainable. It's good to dream of the SDGs, but the action is to reduce and reuse the circular economy. Uh, and, uh, and that's what we are doing. And that's what's coming in the UAE. Gene editing, exactly. you know, opening a whole new horizon for medical science. And you see, the difference of this first uh, industrial revolution is, it doesn't change what you are doing, it changes you. If you take a genetic editing, right. uh, just as an example, it's you who exactly. are changed. Yeah. And of yeah. course, this has a big impact yeah. on your identity. Yeah. And offers certain kinds of possibilities that have to be careful about you know yeah. when you began to when you began to do that kind of gene editing some people worry that you are changing what it means to be human that's the problem and, yeah. uh, it, uh, of course the new uh, industrial revolution offers us many opportunities but it raises many fold questions on the ethical but even legal yeah. Uh, implications and we have to be prepared for it and that's what we want to do in Davos next year. Hundreds of unvaccinated teachers across the state will have their pay slashed as a penalty for not complying with COVID-19 directions. Tim Arvia joins me in the studio now. Tim, exactly how much are these teachers going to lose? Well, it depends on actually how much they're paid. So each teacher, it will be different, but effectively they're having their pay cut for 18 weeks. The government had told them it could be up to 20. They've actually made the decision 18 weeks is what they're going to cop. And in that, their pay grade essentially goes down one level. So for some teachers, it will be hundreds, some it may be thousands, but that is what they are looking at. And uh, the government has actually sent them these letters, each one, and they're making it clear they're taking this pretty seriously. Um, part of the letter reads, it's important that you are aware of the seriousness with which the department views your inappropriate behaviour and failure to comply with the direction. You should be aware that any further substantiated allegations and or a breach of the code of conduct or standard of practice will be viewed very seriously and may result in the termination of your employment. This is a really extreme uh, uh, financial penalty because these teachers and, and educators have been stood down without pay. And that's usually only reserved for those people who have been uh, convicted as criminals. It comes from China as well. I don't think he's going. <laughs> okay, this is no joke. This is what you are doing. You fucking Jesus Christ. It's not social distancing. Put your mask on. Get away from me. Put it on. Stop it. Whoa, whoa. 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 What is going on inside So this guy in Michigan came up with this idea. Six feet apart. Oh yeah. Extreme extreme measures of self-isolation. It um, gets the point across. all day. Share your smile. Z-Shield wraps your face. On prend une bouchée et on remet le masque. On prend une bouchée et on remet le masque. Let's go. 
the mask in mascot. You must wear your mask. have to make it fun it's science it's it's science i got to meet people like sammy davis and that kind of shit you know they were still around what was he like just like you would expect him to be cool he's a hep cat just, right just like he is all the time you know what i realized about sammy that was coke the whole thing with the mouth like this it was Think about it. He's it, that whole era is cocaine. I don't know anything and about drugs. like this with that cocaine mouth, <laughs> man. And the whole and the way he would laugh and hug and all that. He was totally coked up. That was all cocaine, man. <laughs> that was a cocaine thing. Sammy told me he worshipped the devil. We were in uh, Dan Tanner's on that restaurant with all the pictures of him. Sammy was like, you know, Satan is as powerful as God. And I was like, what the. F what are you talking about? He says, why do you think there's so much anger in the world and you know, killing and murder and uh, the Satan? And, and he saw my reaction to it, then he kind of lightened up on it. Buddy. And he was like, the Dan Tan is this dark and it's uh, the candles on the table and Sammy's face over the candle. You know, Satan is as powerful as God.